All right, we are live for Second Sunday. Technically, Second Monday, my bad. Seems how over the last couple of years, I have been able to create kind of an adventurous life for myself. And uh, I have uh, been on a little bit of a quest this last week. Ended up in the Black Hills, um, getting kind of anchored back into some roots. So that was fantastic and important. So here we are, Second Monday. And I am, as always, here to kind of give you guys your updated energy report of, you know, the 411, what's going on with the planet vibrationally, what's going on, you know, with the, the planet, with, you know, our humanity, and, and kind of give you guys more of a direct understanding of what all of this means for you. You know, I'm sure there's already a ton of energy updates out there that are talking about what the astrology is doing, what the human residence is doing, what the planet is doing. More importantly for me, I care about what you're doing, right? So I take all of those, those energies, that information and kind of like put it in a real life reference point for you guys. Um, because that's kind of what works for me. I truly believe that we all know that we are spiritual beings having a very physical experience, but we came to really create this, that the idea of heaven on earth. And as you kind of look around right now at the circumstances of, of the planet, of humanity, of our collective, of you know maybe even your personal environment, it doesn't feel like it's going towards that heaven on earth. It doesn't feel that way. It feels if anything, it feels like there might be kind of a civil war going on that's not being broadcast. Well, you're absolutely right. There is. We are in full blown war. But, but it is not the way it seems. Nothing is as it seems. Nothing. Because we have moved into a higher dimensional space of awareness. Now, what that means is that you are more aware of yourself. You are more aware of the things you do. You're becoming more aware of why you do them. But all of a sudden, nothing outside of you seems to make sense at all, except this idea that if we're going to become that pressurized diamond, then the chaos of change, right, which is universal law, is part of our awakening. It's part of our are shifting. It's part of us becoming that really embodied version of that higher self. And if you guys were following me last week, um, if you're hearing me for the first time, my name is Jessica Alstrom. I have an international academy that I teach basically kind of an understanding of quantum physics through kind of a spiritual peephole to kind of to bridge the gap, right? To create the bridge to help you guys navigate from from you know what is real. And what is unreal to bringing that back to understanding that you're the creator of your reality. So really, whatever is real is what you say is real. And I teach all over the world virtually right now, obviously, because we are, um, you know, we're, we're all kind of doing a shut in. We're all on timeouts. We're, we're navigating the inward journey. We're on that vision quest. And this year is going to look completely different. And here's why. If you've been following me last year, I took you guys through the vision quest which if you understand that kind of native understanding that you're going to be stripped of all of your comfort zone and your, um, you know, your ability to predict and navigate into the unknown and, and basically through that kind of depri deprivation, you find yourself. Now, you know, here's the thing about this incarnation that is kind of laughable is that our version of, of kind of, you know, um, being, deprived is like not being able to go to the pub, right? Not being able to hang out with our friends. And so even though we are going through extreme times of pressurizing the consciousness within you to move into that space of self-realization that seems very kind of sexy and romantic, it's not, right? It's like boring, right? And, and, and you know, we're, we're kind of being pushed into that boredom state to open up creativity. And we're moving away from that kind of survival energy into more of, okay, what am I going to do with this? And what am I going to do with this? And what am I going to do because I can't do that, right? So if you have been kind of working on your journey the last 5, 10, 15 years, you're probably at a place where you're watching a lot of people return home and they're moving through a transition right now. We're, we're losing a lot of physical versions of our loved ones right now all over the planet they are transitioning back into energy 
Um, this is not bad. This is not good. This is a change of focus. This is a new understanding of un being able to kind of work from a different perspective. You know, when you're physically in focus, you are very limited to what you can see, what you can feel, what you can create, because what you're creating is usually based on what you are hiding, what you're avoiding, what walls you've built, right? And when you move into that kind of transitional space, all those walls fall down and you go, oh, I remember, I'm a fragment of God, I've got this. Now let me help you from the other side to kind of give you guys that, that kind of boost in the right direction. So. I know that there's there's um, a lot of loss right now in that physical space. There's a lot of gain in the etherical place. If we understand quantum physics, we can look at limits or we can look at potentials. And that is what this year is, is you arriving at your greatest potential. What builds potential, right? When everything goes everywhere, when nothing is solid, when nothing is frozen, when things start to become malleable, right, you become malleable. You break away from some of those attachments. You kind of, you know, work away from codependencies. You start to understand entanglement. You start to feel your own energy again, even though the world is in chaos. And there's this place where you really feel like you're either at the beginning of the bridge, the middle of the bridge, the end of the bridge. If you're at the end of the bridge, you're probably teaching. Right? But it doesn't mean that you're also not learning. I am currently doing a very big workshop called the Master of Love. And it is a very vulnerable space because, you know, we all say, you know, I am love and I am light. And, and um, you know, this is what I came for. And I'm an empath and I'm a sensitive and I'm a light worker and love, all the other things that we so-called call ourselves. But when it gets down to the nitty gritty of relationships, most of us, even at high levels of teaching, have no understanding of what a truly unattached, connected, unconditionally loving relationship is and how it works. Because we've read about it, right? We've meditated about it, our guides have told us about it, but how many of us have truly lived, right, thought, word, deed, time space continuum of an actual completely unattached fully loving unconditional relationship right you most of you can't say that about your pets you can't say that about your kids and you can't say that about your spouse you can't say that about your families and a lot of you can't even say that about yourself yet well, that's okay because 2021 is the birthing of all the things that you have been doing, feeling, saying, asking for, hiding, refusing, resisting, will come to focus this year. This year, you know, I use the word reconciliation and a lot of people were scratching their heads. I guess that comes from my, you know, time in accounting where, you know, when you're reconciling your bills, you're you're itemizing and you're looking for missing information, right? And then you're adding it all up. Technically, quantumly, that's what we're doing. But in a simpler approach, what we're truly doing this year is that we are individually, collectively, and um, intimately going to be unpacking our baggage, okay? You will be unpacking some baggage by yourself. You will be unpacking some baggage with loved ones. And you will be unpacking baggage in other scenarios and situations. Now, most of you have forgotten what's in your bag. The reason why is because when we, when we are feeling love and loss at the same time, when grief enters love, right? And if you've ever been a mom or if you've ever lost the love of your life or if you've ever lost a, a loved one, or you've ever fallen madly in love and in the same instant felt a deep fear of loss connected to that same feeling, you understand what I'm saying. Most everything that is in our bag right now that we would identify with as love has an underlining, you know, uh, baggage or attachment of loss connected to it, right? And the more you love something in the old paradigm, 
the scarier it is to lose it. Which is why we have forgotten what's in this bag because we have moved kind of into the art and business of love, but we have moved physically away from love. And the reason why is because it is so much easier to teach love, to teach other people how to love, to fix other people or help other people see their blind spots in relationships. But to physically sit in that love equals pain scenario that's in your baggage is to really become aware. And everything that we have accumulated up into this year, you know, if you've been working with me, I took you through the warrior training, which is which is coming back in a big way this year because you can technically use warrior training to navigate the this this new realm because I teach these kind of principles of what it takes to be and this sounds kind of cliche or, or woo woo but like a love warrior like what is that like you know to me that means very strong vulnerable in love you know standing on the battlefield you know and saying i love you i love this so much i would let it kill me right and and a lot of you would say that for your loved ones a lot of you would say that for your pets a lot of you would say that you know i'd take a bullet for you and you would because you'd rather take a bullet than lose them You'd rather lose yourself. You're going to see a lot of your patterns this year in relationships. And the reason why everything is so convoluted outside of you, right? Are we at war? Right? Is the Galactic Federation here working? You know, who's going to be in the president's office? It, you are so kind of de detached and disassociated from that absolute truth that you're forced to do something else until you get more news which I think is perfect because everything that is happening outside of us is just a reflection of the internal turmoil battle war of dark versus light within. Okay. If you've been working with me for the last seven, 10 years, you know that I am not shy of shadow work. I'm much more comfortable in the darker spaces of our consciousness because that is where we store the gold, right? The true alchemy of ourselves is not to banish the darkness inside. I gotta stop judging. I gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop thinking that. I gotta zap out fear. I gotta I gotta stand up to so and so. Nope. You need to unpack the baggage. You need to see what's in there. You need to see who's in there. Why it's in there. What's in there? How long it's been in there? Maybe millennial. Like maybe it's been in there for thousands of years. You will be unpacking your baggage. You will manifest everything you need to unpack that baggage because every single one of you has asked to return to love and love in its true understanding is the idea not a belief system that you are complete in any situation in any circumstance in any of it with any one at any time you are complete. I take you guys through the journeys of your lack belief systems. That's all about need, moving into higher awareness. It's all about desire and wants, and moving into the state of beingness, which is is. I I just am. I am that I am. And until we return to that space, we will need to concentrate on packing our backs. Some of you are doing it willingly. Some of you are being forced. Some of you are saying you can't come out of your room until it's done. So what does that look like, right? Think about a bag you packed a really long time ago. You have no idea what's in there, right? It's dusty, and as you begin to open it, there aren't going to be things in there that you want to see. There's not going to be things you want to remember. There's not going to be memories in there that are going to feel good all the time. But in hindsight, there also will be so many things that you forgot you had. There will be so many treasures. There will be so many beautiful memories that were actually trapped in pain. Because if you were able to look at love through the eyes of completion or um, uh, full understanding instead of the eyes of grief, you would understand that you've never lost anything and you never can lose anything. 
right? The other, the loved ones that are crossing over right now, they are actually easier to connect and work with because they reside in a higher frequency. And all you have to do is move out of grief into the higher frequencies. And you have your BFF, you have a grandmother, you have your best friend, you have your soulmate back. And they are also assisting you to rise up in that frequency. You will need that space. You will need that understanding to help you unpack this bag. Now, none of you will actually receive your bag. This is important because you're like, I got no bag. My life is okay. Nobody's putting a bag of baggage in front of me yet. Well, that just means that you are still navigating through your self-love journey. Okay. Because in order for you to look in that bag and really sit with that bag, and face that bag, you have to be strong in, in connection with yourself. You have to be strong in knowing that there is no such thing as failure. You have to be strong and vulnerable in knowing that you are perfect for what you have created thus far, that you have come so much farther, that you appreciate the body that you're sitting in, that you look at all of your experiences as motivating factors that have pressurized pain into purpose, that you are ready to see what's in that bag. And if you are not ready to see what's in that bag, you you won't know what I'm talking about, right? You will be like, oh, she's just a crazy person, right? Cool, on to the next, right? It's fine. But if you are in that space, usually the people that can hear my voice that tune into my work are ready for this work. This is the work of unpacking, okay? And, and if you're, you know, just like coming back from a trip, you got to find out what stays, what goes, what needs to be washed, right? What needs to be thrown out, what needs to be shook out, right? What needs to be organized, okay? And that is what you're going to be doing metaphorically this year with your life because you have all asked for love. You have all asked to be love. You have all asked to create love. You have all asked to receive love. And when you ask, it's given. And you're, you're going to be given in two different ways because the universe provides love in two different ways. One, unconditional stream of bombarded consciousness of love. Like It's almost to the point where it knocks you over. Okay, It's like a big wave, the love bomb, right? Your dog, your babies, right? You get the love bomb. But the one that's, that, that tends to work the quickest on the divine masculine part of you, which you all have, is tough love, right? Good old time and space, right? I'm going to sit here while you tie your own shoes, even if it takes us six hours, even though I want to do it myself, right? That is kind of the idea of what you're going to be receiving from the universe as guidance this year. Either you will have too much information or you will have no information. You will have too much help or you will have absolutely no help. You will have so much love that you want to burst, and then you will literally be facing your own demons. All in the same year. That will carry us into a three, four year span that will kind of help us wrap up the work that we're doing right now. We all know the generations that we're in right now. We are the bridge workers. We may not see the fulfillment of what's on the other side, if we do not get busy unpacking this bag. Now, you know, we will see it from different eyes, right? Different bodies, possibly different, different um, calibrations of spirit. But this particular incarnation, the one that you're physically focused in right now has an opportunity to be a part of crossing the bridge or working the bridge and everything is perfect and divine. Now notice how I'm not saying, you know, go get that podcast going, you know, go write that book. You've seen me say that over the years. Right now what I'm saying is unpack your bags. Because when you unpack your bag, you are going to see what is in the way of love. You're going to see the things that you do that keep you from love. You're going to see your own sabotage. You're going to see your own neglect. You're going to see your own um, drama playing out. You're going to see other people's dramas playing out. OK, this is the beauty of this workshop that I'm doing right now, because, you know, for the last probably three years, because my 2017 was was make or break it. And there was times where I contemplated just walking away from this whole idea 
of everything that I was doing. And I was still teaching and I was still doing broadcasts and I was still mentoring. And, but I was having a, a complete destructive cycle within myself. And I needed to face that baggage. For the last three years, I have been working to unpack that bag and put everything away. It's been, it's been extremely tough. It's been scary. It's been lonely. It's been wonderful. It's been abundant. It's been freeing. It's been educational. And now that I'm coming through the other side of it, I am attracting relationships where people are saying, hey, can you help me unpack my bag? Right? I'm like, yes, I can. Doing it in my relationships. I'm doing it with my class. I'm doing it with my students. I'm doing it with my kiddos. I'm doing it myself. Because when you kind of understand what it's actually going to take, you realize that it's not something that you can just dump out your bags and ignore it. Like you have occasionally over the years where you wanted to unpack the bag. What you do instead is you throw everything back in the bag, zip it up because you don't want anybody to see it. Even maybe you're mentoring, you know, your teachers. And, and this baggage is compressed pain. It's compressed love. It's compressed memories. It's, it's compressed spirit. It's compressed darkness. It's compressed light. And sometimes you, you know, start to unzip and a lot of it comes out until you zip it back close. It doesn't matter how long this takes you. If you're at a place where you can zip that all the way out and go, whatever is in here, I fully accept. Whatever aspect is in here of me that I probably need. It, it, and here's, here's kind of a biohack, guys. If you are, are still struggling with that idea of money that is just a holographic experience of energy created from creativity, you're still struggling with the money game, you haven't unpacked the part of the bag that is a part of you that has your money coordinates. And some of you are afraid of that money coordinates truth or that identity within you because you associate it with something bad. Right, the third dimensional version of you, or the you know the the collective version of you, or the matrix version of you, and God forbid that that is who you are. You you don't want to be associated with what is happening out there. You don't want to be associated with your government. You don't want to be associated with those you know stories of whatever you hear through the cabal. You don't want to be associated with that. Well, the way I just said that is guaranteed resistance that you are that way somewhere within that box. But you have to understand that the dark parts of you know physical density. The dark parts of you navigate the internal tunnels of the divine masculine art of separation. There are parts of you in this bag that have coordinates to your riches that you left here on earth for yourself 16,000 years ago. But because you associate that part of yourself with darkness or you know cruelty or fill in the blank evil demons whatever then what you do is you resist that part of yourself because the bag is you and a lot of you are wearing the bag and it feels like pain it feels like pain in the body some of you are holding the bag outside of you and it feels like pain in relationships if you're holding it in it feels like pain in the body holding it out feels like pain in relationships Right? It's just a different way of you being able to divert the stuff that's in your back. Now, what I've gotten to experience this year, which has just been such a catalyst and, and such an extreme sport for me, honestly. This year has been an extreme sport already, and I think we're like at a day 11. It is all about manifesting that part of you, whether it's within you or another person, that that you are madly in love and terrifies you at the same time. It's like this delicious ecstasy of terror and love all mixed in the same. Now you're saying, well, yeah, that feels like a twin flame relationship that ended really badly, right? Well, technically twin flame relationships are, are about awakening. They're about returning us to self-love. They're about destruction and creation all disguised in the idea of love that always equaled in pain. That's not what I'm talking about this year. I'm talking about this year we unpack the bag so that we can have those partnered, really unified yet non-attached relationships, partnerships that basically 
like I said in the Q and A the other day, if you pay, if you guys were watching that, is is the understanding that that soulmate energy is like a multiplication problem. Like it's like you and someone else multiplies your expansion, your love, your creativity, your your reality, your abundance, your freedom, and that's how you know that you are fully coherent with the heart. When you begin to manifest these type of relationships where you know, you're not always battling someone's ego, you know, you or the other person isn't constantly sabotaging the love that is behind the door of grief. You're not rejecting them because you're afraid that they're going to reject you first. You're not abandoning them because you're afraid they're going to abandon you first. Or you're watching them abandon you because they don't want you to abandon them later. Right? We've been dealing with this our whole life. And now we're at this place where we have literally rendezvous at this space where we are here to create coherency of the heart. We're no longer here to think with the mind that stores all the memories of pain and keeps you in this kind of detoured, sabotage, roundabout, hamster wheel reality of manifestation. There are going to be some things that you're going to face within yourself this year that are going to show you why you haven't been able to manifest love. You're going to see things this year about yourself that you were physically in the way of, right? It's like, you know, when you're kind of like, ooh, and someone walks by you and you're like, oh, sorry, I didn't even know I was in your way, right? You're going to have that notice this year. You're going to be like, wow, I've been in my own way. And I have been sabotaging these loving relationships through these lower frequencies, right? Shame, guilt, humiliation, resentment, grief, loss, judgment, right? Um, abandonment, rejection. We have all of those things that are basically walls around your heart. If you're taking my workshop right now, we're, we're learning that in the new energy, and when I said you guys are in a new world and all of their rules have changed, I was not kidding. Because we're entering the state of non-duality. And as we enter into a state of non-duality, there is no bad and there is no good. There is only tools, opportunities, and potentials in everything, which means inside your bag, which you thought was trash, right, and this and junk and, you know, hurt and all this stuff. No, every ounce of what is in your bag is potential because you've done some of your best things in life out of shame. Right. You've you've uh, gotten out of situations that were really beneficial for you from fear. Right? You've learned to love through loss. So these lower frequencies that have held you back from returning to love your entire life, you will begin to use as your engine of manifestation this year, which means that you have arrived because whether it's shame, right, or creativity or boredom or um you know judgment or isolation or humiliation or loss or love excitement ecstasy it it has the exact same value in creation a lot of times we have used these lower frequencies to accelerate love tends to be a little bit like a moped but loss really speeds us up now, we always have that opportunity to be bitter or better, but we know baseline that the best apology is change behavior. So as you begin to unpack your bags and start to see through your higher self of awareness, your new realization, the rebirthing of the I am presence, you and your ego sit in tandem looking at each other and go, OK, I just pulled out a big ball of shame. Right. What am I going to do with this? I can't throw it away because you can't throw energy away. It doesn't die. It changes forms. Right? So you throw it. You think you throw this bowl of shame away or this little, you know, box of shame away. And it turns in to something to remind you of shame outside of you. Right? I throw the shame away. Run away from it. Now I'm going to manifest someone who will shame me or remind me of my shame. Because the universe loves you so much, it says, unpack the bag and use everything. Don't waste anything. 
because if you neglect, ignore, dispose, you're going to see it in a future version of yourself or someone else that will show you that you actually didn't throw it out. So we want to use everything. You guys who cycle, you guys that are all about the, the environment are going to love this analogy because we're going to take the pain and we're going to use it in a different way this year. Right? This is exactly what we're doing in my workshop, Master of Love, because what we're realizing is that there's no longer lower frequencies and higher frequencies. We're flipping everything ever at, over and everything is equal. And in this new relationship that I'm working through that I'm literally um, teaching everyone as it unfolds is I am using all of those lower frequencies as an entrance to love unconditionally. Not easy. It was easy. Everybody would be doing it, right? It takes a huge amount of self-awareness, self-love, self-grace, you know, having to master the art of how, using time and space when we need a little buffer point to remember who we are, right? Our own reflections of how far we've come, what the point of what we're doing is, so that you can stay in that space of the now moment to continue to unpack the back. Now, obviously, you could do this in a few months. You could do this in a few years. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter really what you do as long as you're unpacking the bag, right? And as you begin to get really, like, savvy and confident with this unpacking process, it will be very natural for you to start assisting other people. And the way that you're going to be assisting other people is not by saying, hey, let me show you what's in your bag. No, it's going to say, you're going to say, let me show you what I just did with shame that was different. Let me just show you how I used loss to, you know, build my legacy and my empire. You know, let me show you how I used humiliation as part of my testimony to stand up for myself. Because when we judge something as bad or good, we remain in a state of duality. And if we remain in a state of duality, we remain separate from ourselves. And therefore, as long as we are separate from ourselves, we will never have a relationship outside of us that doesn't somehow feel separate. We will never have money that somehow is not lacking in some form of whether it's time or health, right? Do we have to give up our health for money? Do we have to give up our wealth for time? You see the separation there? So as we move into a state of non-duality, we change the game. We play the rules differently. I have been preparing my students by playing the non-duality game, by doing the vision quest, by doing warrior training, by doing the I am, and arriving in this moment this year of the year of unpacking your baggage. You will not get away from it. You can take some time and space, right? You can put it back in. Until you maybe build up a little bit more self love, but then your 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 higher self will return you back to the bag. It will be enlightening. It will be vulnerable. It will be courageous. It will be worth it. It will be worth it. What is on the other side of that is that idea, you know, of understanding that even from a religious point of view that. The devil is God because it's a part of creation. Whether whether there's a separation there or not, it still is, right? And there is so much potential in the darkness that you are avoiding of yourself. There is where the diamonds and gold are located. It is where half of your intuition resides. People don't understand this. And I just actually gave this to my class this week. Half of your Akashic intuition, the magic that is you is hidden in your darkness, not your light. We keep thinking, uh, get more light, get more light, get more intuition, get more connection, get more channeling, right? And you're getting halfway there. You are, and you're like, why am I only getting halfway there? Because the rest of your intuition is stored in the part of you that you are avoiding. The so-called dark, the so-called demonic, the so-called whatever you wanna call it. You can call it density. You can call it darkness. You can call it emptiness. You can call it forgotten love. Call it what you call it. Half of what you need to get to the other side of this bridge 
is hidden in your intuition of the darkness within you. You will make peace with this part of you. You will get to know it. You will befriend it. You will take that friendship into understanding and understanding will return to love. When you return to love into the dark parts of yourself, you will fully engage and reconcile, come back together. Your intuition will go from 50% to 100%. Your body will start to activate, okay? Now, there's lots of different ways you can do this. I like to work in the realms of the, 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 the tangible, the visceral, the visual, because that helps that inner child within me, that ego identity, with, part of me be able to go along this journey. When everything stays in the metaphysical principles, when everything stays in meditation, when everything stays in the etherical, the lower parts of my consciousness, my ego identity, my inner child, are not necessarily along for the ride because they reside in a lower frequency or a frequency of less realization or less awareness because there is no lower and higher at this point. So when we actually work in the unpacking and the unpacking we're doing in our relationships, we're, in we're doing with our bodies, we're doing with our minds, we're doing with our past, present, futures, we're doing it with our, our, you know, our stuff, right? Our bodies. Then that is when that kind of fully embodiment of understanding returns because until you physically do something, you don't understand it. Unless you physically walk somewhere, you haven't gotten there. Even if you've read about it, if you haven't, physically unpack the bag you will not reap the benefits of what that looks like All right nothing feels better than organization and unpacked bags clean spaces right i know that i am that i am that's my stuff okay and it is as simple as that so for january is really going to be your jump start you know some of you guys have been unpacking for a while some of you are almost done unpacking some of you are done some of you haven't got the bag yet. Some of you are still waiting at baggage claim. Like, where's my stuff, right? If you're noticing that you're not manifesting you being forced into unpacking your bags right now, I really want you to take stock of what your relationship is with you. You know, is there still that inner critic that is like pushing you down and humiliating you? And are you in scenario thinking where you're taking one thought and turning it you know, 10 different ways? Are you tapped into influenced fear, right? Are you, are you um, focused on love, but secretly focused on avoidance of pain, right? Are you angry at the world? You know, you probably haven't gotten your bag yet. No big deal. You will. You absolutely will. We will all get there, right? It, it's funny because it was like, very interesting to travel this last week and get on a plane and go back to where basically I was raised for 35 years, which was LA. And LA always had that kind of feeling of overpopulation and like turmoil and heaviness. I mean, it's beautiful, the beaches, you know, surfing in the mountains, of course, but kind of like, you know, airport kind of idea of LA. Always was like, ooh, it's a cringy, right? It's a cringe feel. And, and you know, to get off the plane, you know, from like Kansas City to get to LA and 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 absolutely, I mean, I literally put a video on Instagram. There was not one person in insecurity when I was walking there. I was literally like walking through the little you know rat trail, and like I was the only one. I was like, "This is eerie. This is LA, right?" And and it it was interesting because you know it's like things are different. And and yet the, the the plane that I got on was standing room only. It was it was it was a, a weird feeling because although there was no one in security at all, I was like, oh my god, I'm this whole plane by myself. How the airlines afford a flight? There was an entire packed plane. So it's like perspective is reality right now. You know, it's like you're going to be able to move through the lines pretty quick, but when you actually get there, you're going to notice that it's still packed. OK, so the metaphor of January is all about kind of you sitting down with your bags because you didn't actually come to make a billion dollars. You didn't come to find the love of your life. You didn't come to, you know, heal everyone. You didn't come to right the wrongs of the devil. 
you came to to remember love through the absence of love. You came to become love in the contrast. You came to share love in darkness. You came to receive love, even though it's terrifying. That's what you came for. Now, how we do that shows up as, you know, writing books and touring and, you know, working on people's bodies and, you know, growing flowers and growing food. That is the symbolic resonant point of your fractal consciousness experiencing the journey of love. And that's why we do what we do. And some of you are like, I'm just going to sit here. It will be me. Cool. You will get there. You don't need anyone or anything outside of you. You will get the bag that feels like it never ends until it ends. Right. And that is the beginning of what we are going to be doing this year together, you know, internally, collectively, metaphorically, metaphysically, quantumly. We will be getting back to that. So super exciting. When you look at it from this different perspective, when you look at it from a new understanding of non-duality, that the hard work is already done, it takes so much more energy and focus to avoid your pain than it does to actually see it differently. It's instant. It's transitional. It's transcendent. Because you really are the alchemist. You are here to turn all of your pain back into love, but you've got to know how to do that. So whether it's me, another teacher, another book, I mean, I, I, I really think that that we are so abundant in knowledge. We're so abundant in training. We're so abundant in metaphors and, and mentors and, and educators and guides and philosophers and writers and healers that none of you should feel alone. Even if you haven't found your direct tribe yet, you know, or, or connected with that truly embodiment of a soulmate yet, you have people at your disposal constantly that feel like that. They feel like they know you better than your, your mother knows you. You know, that we're in your head, that we know what you're going through because we do. You know why? Because we are you. And whether I went through it through a different time space in a different parallel reality and now I'm here on the other side of it going, well, this is what I what I want us to do with this now, at least with my collective community, because I'm always about the biohacks, the cheat codes, and the shortcuts. I'm not about you know attracting ten more relationships till I realize there's a bag in front of me. Okay, you don't need to keep missing this bag. You just need to really sit down and go. Okay, I'm really not going to get away from this. I'm going to manifest it in the exact moment I need it. I'm going to sit down with it and I'm going to ask it what it needs me to know about it, what it needs me to see about it, what it needs me to know about that, right? And then, okay, what can we do with it? What can we do with this mess? You guys know I've been teaching you every negative is a shortcut and dark is actually hidden light because even the darkest aspect of creation itself still harbors light. Just have to get all the way down into it. And what does it take to get all the way down into it? Love. Only someone who could truly love darkness could get all the way down. And I love the, the, the analogy because we're just coming off of Christmas is that the story of the Grinch, right? And the, the Grinch is this, you know, big, scary green monster. And, and it's like, you know, it's, it's pathological and it's, it's, it's all these things, right? It's um, suicidal. It's, schizophrenic, right? It's, it's the, the idea of, of untrustworthy energy, right? And, you know, all of that stuff. And then little Cindy Lou Who, she's like, no, I see love in you. I see good in you. I'm going to stand here while you're yelling at me, you know, while you're kicking me out. I'm going to giggle. I'm going to give you a compliment. I'm going to appreciate you. And that courage of that little girl in that story helped assist the mirror of the Grinch. And it is so perfect because as our hearts begin to grow, right, you will either be Cindy Lou or you will attract Cindy Lou into your life because you are asking. So whether you're the Cindy Lou 
or you're attracting the Cindy Lou in this time space, it don't matter because you will get it. You will get it in a form that is going to help assist you with your baggage, right? There's always a flashlight provided on your journey. You just have to be aware of it. I will tell you, one of your godsend frequencies this year is appreciation. Appreciation for yourself and appreciation for the people who are helping you unpack the baggage that you've been hiding forever. Okay? That is what I have for you guys for January. Hope you have an opportunity to join me on this workshop. It's it's very um, vulnerable because it is really, really about my particular um, returning to love process that has been, you know, terrifying and delicious all at the same time. So feel free to join us. You don't have to, you know, wait till the next cycle. You jump in, you start where you go. It's available on the website, jessicalstrom.com. If you're like, oh, that files like I haven't seen my bags yet. Go do some warrior training. Warrior training will put you into the place where baggage claim is. Okay? For now, enjoy what you have in front of you, whether it feels like dark, whether it feels like loss, whether it feels like love, whether it feels like law, like grief. Like I told my class last week, grief and loss is going to be one of your greatest frequencies this year. Those two frequencies return you to love the fastest. Appreciation is what is your saving grace to help you achieve that momentum during that time of learning how to be vulnerable with yourself, with other people, okay? All right, so until next month, I will see y'all soon. Thank you for being patient and letting me do second Monday instead of second Sunday. And enjoy this time because you are literally at the, the, the transition of humanity. We are moving back to grace and love through the idea of creating non-duality. And you're like, Jess, you didn't say anything about the government. You are the government. You are the pain. You are the solution. You are the problem. You are the gift. You are love. All right. See you guys all next time.